This week on CrossFeed. Footballers for Jesus. Government-owned churches? Is your boss a Jewish carpenter or not? Psychics fail to foresee conflict. And Jesus loved you. Vote for me. Welcome to this week's edition of CrossFeed News. I'm Pastor Jim Butler. And I'm Mark. (laughs) (laughs) Out in Dedham, Massachusetts. Great, we have an additional host tonight. (laughs) I'm I'm Pastor Dale (laughs) Crisley, Pastor of St. Paul Luther Church in Delaware, Iowa. Jim, your lips are moving. You need to like lean over a little bit more to your left when you do that because then your mouth is hiding behind me. <laughs> Just like to introduce your little friend tonight. This is Mark, uh, and uh, he actually belongs to my son who's serving in Iraq, and he's one of my cup of collection. I actually have about a half dozen. I have to introduce. I have to bring in the uh, Alba Moose one day. <laughs> no moose. Oh, quiet. Anyway, so. Uh, uh, we were doing it. We were at a preschool fair tonight, Mark and I. And uh, so um, Mark talks to, the, talks to the, 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 the adults and stuff. And Mr. Moose is real popular in my preschool. So everybody. And so Mr. Moose and I were walking around. And so uh, uh, so Mr. Moose was um, doing his thing tonight. And uh, all these people were coming over and talking to him. And just, you know, all these people were loving the moose. Uh, but, uh, yes, I, I need to learn to be a better ventriloquist. Uh, but, uh, you know, but Mark and I do I, I hang out together. He's, he's been my buddy for years, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> See, we could have had an extra host on last week for our 100th episode. Yeah, our guest host there. That would have been cool. Yeah, see? I work cheap. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or where should we start tonight? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's see here. Soccer, soccer. Okay, soccer. Let's do the soccer guys for Jesus here. Okay. This one, you know, I saw the, I saw the headline, and I thought, you know, this is awesome. I, you know, this is great. And then I started reading the story, and it all went bad. <laughs> So, so here's okay. Here's the synopsis. If you went to CrossFeedNews.com, this is what you saw. Okay, um, playing soccer for God, Brazilian footballers and the Holy Spirit, and for you know, for those of you who well not well versed, um, when we talk about football, you know, Americans call it soccer. The rest of the world calls it football. So, um, so we're talking about soccer. Many Brazilians playing for Europe's soccer clubs are members of the Pentecostal congregations and are determined to spread their faith. While the footballers are excited or are expected to donate one tenth of their sizable income to their churches, they often have no idea where the money's going. Like I just, I first just saw you know the beginning of it and um, that oh, there's all these guys that are you know they're athletes and they're Christians and they're wanting to. Um, you know, tell people about Jesus and stuff. And I went, Hey, yeah, you know, that's great. You know, like athletes for Christ kind of thing or something like that. Right. Or in the States we have the fellowship of of Christian athletes. Okay. But then you start reading the article and I think that Brazilian Pentecostalism is different from a lot of, but not all Pentecostalism in the United States. Well, It's a little bit of health and wealth in there. A little? But one of the issues that, you know, um, as I read this, is um, that they kind of take, put the worst construction on things in this article. Well, yeah. Uh, This article is, uh, it's it's a German, it's your Spiegel, it's German, and I mean, there's just a, a, a couple places there is some lines in there that, I mean, you, you could just tell this guy um, was very... Um, um, the article is skewed. 
yeah, I mean, it's, 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 there's just, you can tell this guy's commitment, this guy's, um, uh, view of, of, of what they, what the, what's going on here. Now, we talked, uh, what, a couple weeks ago about Sarah Palin, who is yes. actually, interestingly enough, debating as we speak, um, as we record this. But, um, the, we, t- and we talked about Pentecostalism and the fact that, um, much of, well, the world, really, but especially the media, um, speaking at that time about American media, uh, really don't understand uh, Pentecostalism. Um, I thought it was interesting that they called it a Pentecostal charismatic church. Isn't that kind of redundant? Ooh, the echo just sure got in my mind. What did you do? Nothing. Why? I don't know. All of a sudden, the echo got really loud. Huh. Okay. But uh, anyway, it was a, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we have enough trouble understanding it in America, but boy, over in, in Germany, where, you know, less than 1% of the people show up for church, I mean, they, it, it's, it's almost a cult. Uh, but, you know, finding out that down in, um, in, in Brazil, it's huge. Uh, it said uh, he is uh, uh, ev- evangelical or evangelical Christian. Um, and almost an estimated 35 million Brazilians, almost one in five, are evangelical. Yep. They're, Their numbers grow by two million years, and 70% of them are members of Pentecostal charismatic congregations. Right. But here's the snag, all right? Now, it says 40 years ago, Brazil was still 90% Catholic. But now the evangelicals have shifted their focus away from converting the poor and are preaching that wealth and consumption are signs of true faith. They're beginning to appeal to artists, politicians, and higher paid athletes. Football players, one of Brazil's most successful exports, are carrying the faith out into the world. And so what we're talking about here is theology of glory. Um, It's the kind of thing you hear from guys like Joel Osteen. Uh, It's the idea that if you're rich, it's because God is blessing you, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But that riches are physical, material wealth is a sign of true faith. That if you are, you know, rich, that means that God is rewarding you for your faith. So apparently, you know, John Travolta and um, and uh, Tom Cruise, God is rewarding them for their faith. And uh, you know, Mother Teresa, uh, you know, and well, okay, most of the early Christian church, they must have been really pretty sparse on the faith because they weren't very rich. So, um, I mean, they won't say that, <laughs> but that's what it implies. And, um, I mean, a lot of the stuff these guys are doing is really cool. Um, they are. They used to have uh, T-shirts that would say stuff like, Jesus loves you, and then when they'd score a goal, they'd take off their uh, jersey and then they'd be wearing this T-shirt on underneath it. But then the uh, uh, FIFA, the International uh, uh, Football Federation, have they've outlawed any kind of uh, religious or um, or political statements on the players' gear, so they can't do that anymore. But um, you know, the idea is that they want to um, they want to share their faith. They want to um, you know, in Brazil, soccer's huge. And, um, you know, so these, and these every guys, place but America, soccer is huge. Well, <laughs> this is true. Although, although you wouldn't know it by going to like American, uh, grade schools, um, especially it seems like, I mean, like, you know, you notice that the expression, well, okay. Except for Sarah Palin is soccer mom. Yeah. You know, she's a hockey mom, but, um, but so I, right. you know, I mean, they're, they're big, but uh, you're, you're talking about the, uh, the shirts there, I mean, one of them says, you know, uh, God is my strength. And, uh, I mean, this is the kind of thing they do. But, you know, what really scared me about this is that they give, uh, oh, it's a good thing, because they, they, they give 10% of their income to the church. But they don't know where the money is going. And it talks about, you know, again, th- this lack of accountability in some churches. You know, there's one guy, he had this private jet and $5 million. In, this is the um, pastor. Yeah, I'm pastor, five million bucks sitting in, you know, in suitcases. 
<laughs> That's just something wrong with small unmarked bills, you know. <laughs> so, um, the, do you get paid like that? <laughs> yeah, where's your five million? <laughs> no, sorry, I guess I don't have enough faith. <laughs> Plus faith, more money. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got That's it all like wrong. Miller beer, beer ad. Plus faith, more money. <laughs> yeah. Um, one part of this that I I don't know if this was um, if this was accurate if or if this was just the uh, the author of this article being a little confused because it says that um, they share the belief that Jesus has entered their bodies in the form of the Holy Spirit. So either they're uh, Jesus only Pentecostals, um, or else they, this writer doesn't understand um, the Trinity. See, Billy Idol gets it. I don't know why she doesn't get it. I would say he probably just doesn't understand the Trinity because a lot of them, he, they said he's Assembly of God, so it wouldn't be uh, Jesus only. It's Jesus only Pentecostals or the United Pentecostal Church. Or the, uh, but like, the Nazarenes and stuff. There's a few of them uh, out there. Church of the Nazarene is Trinitarian. Uh, Church of the Nazarene it hates Pentecostal. Okay, all right. No, okay. Then I'm sorry. Which one is it? There's one. It's something like that. Is okay, no. The Disciples United of Christ? Church. Depends what, what brand of Disciples of Christ. Oh, yeah. There's a few different ones. But, no, okay, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, no. I know. There was something like that, though, that they were also Jesus only Pentecostals. Yeah, right. but anyway, anyway. Uh, you know... Um, but Borden, the, the, this one soccer guy named Borden, says in 1994, you know, he was sitting in the back of a small church and he began to feel a hot sensation in his legs and was the most, you know, began stamping his feet on the floor uh, as if their own will slowly at first and then faster and faster. And uh, um, he said the pastor said they should let him march. I'm thinking and, if you feel uh, a hot sensation in your legs. You know, let's see, heat down, um, where's this, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I, I'm just a little, when you, you focus on the whole experience being the, the evidence of faith, uh, I get a little nervous, and, um, But that fits, that fits right in with the health and wealth gospel. You think about it, because now you've got a, 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 a you know, an experience that says what you're, you've got is real. And now you've got the money, which says what you've got is real. So, you know, you, you've got, you know, these these things outside of Scripture that says this is real. Yeah. But not Scripture you know? itself. And that's that's the problem, um, is that, yeah, you're, you're looking to, you know, an experience. Uh, and and, and if, you, if you know anything about Methodism, really, it's all this is a direct uh, descendant of, of, of John Wesley. Yeah, yeah, he was very much into experience. Uh, well, Wesley was into this idea of the second blessing. How did you know who was really, you know, you know, you received the second blessing, you're were, you were completely holy. Well, how did you know who, who had received the second blessing? That became the next question. And the answer to that, of course, then was the experience. But part of this all comes to the fact that they're all, they all actually ought to grow out of Anglicanism, which has no defin definitive doctrine. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting to see how all this kind of builds out of this. You know, you don't have a a, a, a strong doctrinal foundation, so you got to have you got to find some sort of foundation, and it winds up being a um, experiential foundation. Now, here's one of those uh, sort of skewed uh, paragraphs. I think I'm hoping um, it says the Pentecostal congregation target. Target members of the upper middle class in Brazil. Part of their objective, apparently, which, you know, there's your, um, your skew word right there, um, is to secure the donations of well-off citizens. Which makes it sound like Scientology. In the past, members were prohibited from drinking alcohol, smoking, watching TV, or going to the cinema or theater. Nowadays, the evangelical churches preach that affluence and enjoyment are compatible with the Christian lifestyle. Uh, church members even believe that material wealth is a reward for living a God-fearing life. Conversely, they must also become wealthy to become good Christians, the logic being that the rich can donate more money, and those who donate large sums of money are good people. 
which um, kind of sounds like Hinduism um, in the sense of that, you know, if you have this, this wealth and that, it's because you deserve it. Of course, in Hinduism, it's because you did something good in a previous life. And in this case, it's because you did something good in this life. But, um, you know, I, I look at this and I go, um, widows might, you know, um, you know, people in Jesus' day were giving lots of money and, um, and Jesus said, uh, you're giving out of your, um, you're, you're giving out of your excess. But the thing is, if you read health and wealth gospel, this is exactly the thing that's taught. Okay. It really, I mean, they're, they're absolutely right in, in this. This, this is, you know, this is the, uh, the Kenneth Copeland, the Jimmy uh, Jimmy Baker, Jimmy Baker was big into this stuff. You knew God was blessing you because you received these things. This this was all part and parcel, and uh, you know, uh, um, you know that that you know material wealth is a reward. And yes, you must, you should become wealthy. You are uh, you are a child of God. You are a king's kid, and God wouldn't want His children to go poor. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> you know, here's the it's deal. bizarre to us, but it really is true. On the other hand, by the way, they kind of mix together here two things, evangelicalism and health and wealth gospel, which are not necessarily the same thing. No. Uh, you know, here, here's the thing. If, if you want to know whether God is blessing you or not, ask yourself this. Did Jesus die on the cross to take away my sin? Am I going to live forever because of that? If so, then what greater blessing could you possibly expect? But if you believe differently and you want to experience God's blessing, <laughs> send money. <laughs> send money to Dale Critchley, <laughs> Delaware, Iowa. <laughs> and you will receive in return a prayer cloth. <laughs> Blessed by me. Right there. <laughs> the people the people listening to the audio are getting something completely different. <laughs> you, need, you need to come up with a better voice there for your puppet, Jim. <clears throat> What's wrong with my voice? <laughs> It's a cute bird voice. <laughs> Just because this guy has no, you know, real imagination. That's his problem. But anyway, <laughs> he will bless, I will bless it for you. This cloth right here. <laughs> and you will receive God's blessings. So send the money to M-A-R-K. Little green pieces of paper. Kids, go to your mom's house. <laughs> Buy little green pieces of paper with presidents on it. And send it to me. Are you quite finished? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave now. <laughs> so they do say the coaches like to have these evangelical athletes because um, they're they're model professional athletes. They don't leave team Christmas parties early to spend the night carousing in clubs. They have stable family lives, and they don't get drunk at the annual Oktoberfest. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, sir. <clears throat> I think we need to move on. <clears throat> uh, let's go to, okay, who, who are you working for? Um, let's, let's talk about this guy. I thought this was kind of interesting. This is out of uh, England. And, um, <clears throat> and, and, and it really does touch on an issue here in America, too. Are pastors and churches covered under employment law and uh, this uh, Reverend Mark Sharp that's who's pictured there behind me um, he's a, a vicar of an Anglican church in uh, uh, Worcestershire well I guess they uh, make Worcestershire sauce anyway um, he had some issues what was going on and he was told by the bishop you're employed by God, and so you can't, you know, 
you can't receive any grievous management. In other words, you can't, you, you know, you can't, you know, complain about your, your working conditions or anything. Yeah, so he and was, he said, hey, I've been, go ahead. It, it was subject, he was subject to constant abuse while his vicarage, that would be like, we'd call it parsonage, um, the, the house owned by the church that he's living in, uh, was infested by mice and frogs with dangerous heating and electrical systems. So, so yeah, his his bishop, the you know, says, well, if you got a problem with it, take it up with God. You work for him. <laughs> Not basically it. <laughs> Sounds like your outhouse. Yeah, it does sound like it. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, actually, it reminded me of a, you know, now for, for us here and, and for Dale and I, the word vicarage means your internship. Mm -hmm. And we had an, in, we had an intern up at one of our churches up here. Um, and, um, the, um, um, the, uh, the, the part of the, his, his, his house, the church's house, his parsonage, um, had a, the hot water heater went out. And, uh, the, uh, then the main circuit breaker went. And the, so the, you know, the past, so, so he called up the church and said, this needs to be taken care of. And, um, they were told him, told him to take, uh, take sponge baths for a week till we can get around to fixing the hot water heater. Nice. And of course, then of course this, you know, this, this main circuit breaker went. Well, unfortunately for this church, his bishop, his uh, intern supervisor in the neighboring church is also the town fire marshal. Huh. And he said if there, if the main circuit breaker went, that means there is systemic error in that house. I will shut that house down and nobody will go live in it. Therefore, you're going to pay for him and his family to have a hotel room. You're going to call an electrician to come and redo that box, and you will have a new hot water heater put in. And if you don't, we will take this up with the state, and we will have you fined. Now, you know, and, and I, I, I remember I thought of that story as I was reading this. You know, that he said that the other guy's going, well, you work for God. You know, you, you, you I mean, he's got a legitimate complaint here. Okay. Yeah. yeah sometimes, it, sometimes we in the parish, sometimes we parish pastors. Yeah, we have to put up with some verbal abuse. Okay. What? A, but you should not have to put up with mice and frogs and uh, heating and electrical systems that are dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. When your house becomes the embodiment of the plagues of Egypt, there's a problem. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, the, this bishop of Worcester, of Worcester said, uh, "You're not employed by the diocese. You have no legal relationship with the diocese. You're not entitled to any form of grievance management." Which, in an Episcopal system, under the Anglican system, that's absolutely wrong. Because the, 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 you're not hired directly really by the church, you are hired by the diocese, because the diocese can move you anytime the bishop wants. I mean, you know, yes, you, you get your payment, you're paid through the congregation, but really, I mean, you know, you're subject to the whims of the bishop. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course here in America, by the way, uh, under IRS rules, we are most definitely considered employees. There's no question for Dale and I about that. Uh, there's some funky things with Social Security that we wind up getting stuck paying both have Social tax. Security. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's only because originally clergy weren't allowed in Social Security. There's there's a long history to how that worked. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it's not. But 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 they've never considered us self-employed or uh, or considered so. Yeah. And anyhow, it's kind of neat that. Uh, the Employment Tribunal in Birmingham said, yeah, uh, for the purpose of this claim, yeah, he's employed by that church. He's employed by that diocese. And therefore, for the purpose of this thing, yes, they are going to be subject to those laws. And they should be. Did I make it clear that your job is at stake? Yeah. Granted, I mean, there's certain, yeah. there's certain things. I mean, yeah, you got to make some allowances for churches. I mean, up here, um, you got to make an allowance for us up here, you know, uh, for example, that if you're going to be a Lutheran church, you have to hire a Lutheran pastor. Therefore, you really can't, you know, there's going to be religious discrimination. You can't mm -hmm. just hire anyone. Right. And and in fact, uh, if you're a Missouri Synod Lutheran church, you hire only men. You can discriminate based on uh, the person's sex, too. Right, based on gender. But... Um, 
But in other realm, other ways, yes, we are we 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 can be subject to to some basic uh, uh, workplace uh, rules and things. And uh, this, you know, and so particularly in this situation, also what's also different about them too is that this is a state church. The Church of England is a state church. Yeah, so they're federal a, employees. Right, yeah, they're, yeah, they would be government, and he'd even be a government employee in a way. Yep. So, so what did you, I'm sorry, I, I, I probably ran off pretty much with this story. What do you think of this guy? Oh, I, I thought he was right on. I, I really felt bad for him, and, um, I, you know, I, I, just this whole idea of that, oh, we're employed by God, you know. Um, you know, we, we, in the church, we don't usually use the word hire. Um, we say call, uh, which is a bit different, although that process works differently depending on, uh, which church you're a part of. Um, in, in some churches, yeah, you're basically hired. I mean, that's the way it works. You go, you apply for the job and, you know, <clears throat> You go through an interview, you have to, uh, what they call candidating, where they um, have to preach like a trial sermon and lead a Bible study, and people decide whether they like him or not. And every year they're up for review, and if the church decides, no, we don't like him anymore, you know, uh, he's preaching against our pet sins, um, now we're going to get rid of him and get somebody in here that won't tell us we're bad, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's the Baptist model. Baptists are known for hire and fire the pastor. Yep. And... Uh, but we, you know, we, we, we are called and it gives us certain protections, uh, you know, to that process. But sometimes those are kept more and unfortunately more in spirit than in reality, yeah. uh, for, for some of us. But, uh, you know, at the same time, though, while we, we, we are called by God, uh, you know, I've known guys who use that as an excuse. You know, I'm not accountable to this congregation. I'm only accountable to God for my actions. You know, and like, no, you're called by that. You're called by God. Through the congregation, you're accountable to the congregation. The congregation's accountable to God to take care for you too. Well, and what it comes down to is, if you're going to be a, a good pastor doing your job, you're going to, you know, you, you're not. In a sense, you shouldn't have to worry about whether you're accountable to the congregation or not. You should be doing the best you possibly can to serve those people. And right. so, you know, it, it's whether whether who you're accountable to is kind of a moot point it's yeah okay fine you're accountable to god well god is calling you to serve those people that's why you're called you know that's that's where the word minister comes from it means servant right it, it doesn't mean you know lord and master so um do your job in time you will call me master absolutely not that i you know always do my job perfectly and no, nobody does you know that's the other problem is you're calling a sinner <laughs> to represent Christ. Well, that, it's, a, it's a pretty tall order, you know, and so we're not perfect and, and we fail. But, you know, the, the other thing about uh, the Christian church is we're all about forgiveness and, um, you know, fresh starts and um, and helping each other out, you know, helping the pastor, helping the congregation to um sort of be all they can be uh, that was the, for the benefit of Jim's kids and um, <laughs> and uh, you know for the congregation Army strong. <laughs> and uh, for the, the benefit of um, you know for the, the congregation to serve the pastor as well so if, uh, if that's not working somebody needs to step in and, and do something whether it's the pastor who stepped out of line or the church that stepped out of line you know the other thing and this, this is something that I'll say to um, to those of you out there who are watching and listening who are not pastors, keep in mind that if there's a problem, if your pastor is is not getting the support that he needs, there's a pretty decent chance he's not going to say anything. All right, um, just because pastors don't like to complain, and so. Um, you know, just be aware of that. Make a point of saying, hey, you know, what could we do to make things better? You know, my congregation here is very supportive. Um, and, uh, and, and I, on a regular basis, have people asking me, you know, what can we do to help you out and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and, and it makes a difference. So, and, you know, they're not perfect either. But you know that's why I'm here. If they were perfect, they wouldn't need me to come and preach the forgiveness of sins. 
So, um, but, but yeah, just, you know, keep that in mind. Ha ha, you fool! You fell victim to one of the classic blunders! Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. Since we're talking about, uh, government, uh, uh, this guy working in a state church and the government, let's talk about government-owned churches. Um, this is the best I could find. I'm sorry. Probably not the best picture, you know, just the generic church there, but I couldn't find anything about this one. Uh, Monday, of course, um, the, the House representatives turned down this, this bailout bill, which I'm going to try not to talk about too much. And then last night, the, the Senate passed it. Uh, by the way, under the Senate rules, it, it was the Paul Wellstone uh, Mental Health and Wellness Act. <laughs> okay. Mental health and because, wellness. Yeah, because um, part of it dealt with uh, 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 part of this dealt one of the uh, the, the sweeteners they added to this one it dealt with uh, the alternative minimum tax, and under the Constitution, all tax bills have to originate with the House of Representatives. You can't re- originate in the Senate. <laughs> And so they introduced the Paul Wellstone Health, Mental Health and Wellness Act. And then by amid, amendment, they stripped all the text out of that bill and threw all the text <laughs> of the bailout bill. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so to get around, the, just to let you know, our senators can get around the Constitution if they want to. <laughs> In case you're wondering. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so uh, uh, if this thing winds up passing, of course, one of the things that they want to do is buy what's considered toxic debt. It's it's these these uh, mortgages that were bad, and uh, so you know what happens because a, a lot of churches have their mortgages with secular banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, my church out in my first church in uh, uh, Rockford, Illinois, did when I was first there. They had the mortgage with a bank in town. Uh, so what happens then if um, the uh, a federal government winds up buying out a bank that holds, you know, church mortgages? Is uh, you know that a violation of the First Amendment? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Um... You know, <laughs> people have already been, you know, at church have been saying, gee, <laughs> can we get a government bailout for our church? Well, for some people, yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've, I've heard people requesting uh, bailouts for all kinds of things. But, you know, the idea here is that, um, I mean, I, I would think that the government's going to keep their hands off of these, you know, they own the loans. So technically they own the church and yeah, that's a bit of a constitutional problem. Um, but it's not like they're dictating this or anything. They're just, they're acting as a bank and, and nothing more. It's, it's not like, it's not like to become stockholders in the church or something like that. And the other issue, though, that gets to be then is what happens um, if this church gets behind its mortgage. I mean, does the church, does, does, does the government give them special consideration? I mean, you know, I mean, talk about a public relations nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my my last church, there was a uh, a house next door a three-family home that came up for sale, or is it two-family, two or three-family home. And we we wanted this, this this house for years so that, you know, we could, you know, tear it down and, and expand our property. But we were in no position to buy it. And um, so, uh, but one of the, somebody said, well, what if we were to buy it and pay for it by renting it out? You know, and that's, that's one of the ideas of, like, these two- and three-family homes is that you, you know, you rent them out, you know, the other levels to help you pay the mortgage. And um, I said, right. I said, and what happens if they get behind? Can you see the headline in the paper? Church, church forces out, you know, uh, church evicts poor family. 
Mm-hmm. I said, you do, we, don't, we don't want publicity like that. Uh, and now, you know, we get the same thing, you know, federal government forecloses on church. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a bit of a mess, wouldn't it? And it would it would look bad for both ends, you know, because then it would, it would cause this big conflict because some people would go, oh, that's horrible. They should, you know, it's a church. You should, you know, be nice to them. And I mean, sadly, um, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of churches um, think that just because they're a church, they deserve special privileges, you know. And so the people of the church would be go, come on, we're a church, you know, and to the point that that they're going, well, yeah, we can be late on this because what, you know, we're a church. They'll be, they'll be nice to us, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's the government. It'll look bad if they foreclose. And, and so we'll pay our other bills first, you know, and, and it's just reality that some churches do that and it's, it's wrong to do that. You know, if your church has that attitude, change it. But, um, mm-hmm. And sometimes they even have that with, with okay, uh, our church body has its own its own bank. We call it the Lutheran Church Extension Fund. And, uh, you know, we, I, you know, I call it, I, you know, our own version of the savings and loan. And a lot of church bodies have these. And, you know, I've known churches, you know, that, that have gotten behind in their payments to them. Yeah, but have almost like treated it like, oh, it's just a family loan, you know, and not really... You know, and they've had to actually foreclose in a future. Again, they want to. Very rarely will they. But I've known them to have to, you know, things out and say, hey, look, here's the deal. You know, this is this is a, a mortgage that you owe us. And not only do you owe it to, to us, really, you owe it to all the other people who are invested with us. Like I said, it's basically an SNL um, for churches. Um, and, you know, these people want their, their interest money that they, they put in here. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, it, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue because ultimately what the government's going to do with these things is find these security, these these mortgages, and then hopefully when the, the market improves, we'll turn around and sell them, mm-hmm. hopefully at a profit. Um, and so, um, you know, then, then you know, there won't be an issue for the government any, any longer. I mean, it's not like they're, they're planning on holding these things forever. Right. Yeah, so hopefully it's... Um you know, by, by doing this, um, it'll, it'll help boost the market, kind of get the ball rolling. And so they'll be able to get rid of these sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but you know, who knows? Right. Uh, but Hey, if a church is behind and the government holds the mortgage for some reason, then yes, the, the government, you know, if they can't work, you know, refinance things to work things out, Welcome to voice print identification. Yeah, they're going to have to foreclose and be done with them. Yep. I mean, that's just, you know, that's that's the risk you take. Yes. Uh, that's why you get it out. There are some churches out there that refuse to take on a debt, and, you know, they won't be able to the money's in the bank. So you have to keep in mind, um, and uh, this is something that I heard uh, earlier this week, but it made a lot of sense to me. You know, we talk in the Lutheran Church about uh, the two kingdoms, the kingdom of the right and the left. Um, the right referring to the church and grace, and the left being uh, the government and law. And, um, and you know, and, and so they're two separate realms. The thing is, the church operates in both kingdoms. You know, I mean, when we talk about salvation and, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, yeah, that's grace, it's forgiveness, it's, you know, there's no condemnation, all right? But at the same time, there, the church has a budget, you know, the church, you know, some churches have a mortgage or, you know, maybe your church's mortgage is paid off, but you know, your church is involved in commerce. Okay. Um, because you have to buy office supplies and you have to pay for different ministry, uh, programs and you have to pay your pastor who, uh, you know, we talked about social security before and, you know, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. So that is all kingdom of the left stuff. That's and you're all subject to employment stuff. laws. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, because of that, you know, when we look at this stuff, we go, oh, you don't have grace. Well, you know what? Grace is not the government's job. You know, so in fact, if even if you look at this bailout thing, technically, um, you know what? It's not really the government's job to have grace on these companies, you know, 
I mean, they're doing it for the sake of the economy. Um, it's not necessarily to benefit these companies per se, but you know, that's how it's going to work out. But, um, but yeah, it's not, you know, the government's job is the law. It's, you know, to, to carry out, uh, what it feels is best for its citizens. And, um, and you know, grace and mercy, they're not really a part of that. That's the church's job. So yeah, no, they'd be perfectly within either. No, I mean, and, and so, you know, if a government did have to foreclose on a church, not only would they be within their rights legally, but they'd be within their rights theologically. And ethically and morally, mm-hmm. because they have to treat the church like they do anybody else. Right. So, but let's go on from let, let's let's. But what if we had as our ad campaign to run? Jesus loves you. Vote for me. <laughs> this is. A, is that I the, wonder, is I wonder that if school? Sarah Palin or Joe Biden's going to say that tonight. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Now vote for me. Oh, for me. <laughs> so is is that a picture of... of <laughs> I'll do whatever you say. Ah, uh, yeah, that's just what we need, a puppet ruler. <laughs> Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. Isn't that what we have? We're not going to go down that road. <laughs> right. is, is that uh, Thunderbolt Elementary School behind you? That is Thunderbolt Elementary School right there. That is that is the place. In Jacksonville, Florida. And there is a young lady there. Jackson, uh, in, uh, yeah, Fleming Island is actually the name of the town. Um, and her name is Lexi Hayward. She's all of 11 years old. And uh, she uh, is running for student council president. Uh, must be, um, like, in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so she not only is, um, you know, telling people to vote for her, but also wants to promote her faith. So um, she has uh, posters up saying, Jesus loves you, Lexi for Prez. <laughs> and um, this and is- one of these deep theological statements, my friend says it's cool, and they'll vote for me and stuff. <laughs> So you got to keep in mind, she's 11, okay? <laughs> you know, we're, we're not expecting real deep theology here. So uh, this, I, 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 this statement, I went, yeah, that sounds like an 11-year-old. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, it kind of sounds like Joe Biden, too. <laughs> so, it's... Uh, the uh, spokeswoman for the county says it's a poster created by a student, not by the school, not by the district. It doesn't insult anyone. Again, it's not inflammatory, and it's not what the law calls school-sponsored speech. So they're letting her keep it up. Okay. But they did receive one anonymous letter, for uh, anonymous, um, <laughs> from someone who described herself as the mother of a Thunderbolt student. She said that although she is a Christian, she finds the poster scary. <laughs> if this were an adult doing this, I'd find it scary too. I find it scary that an adult comes pointing and doesn't want to sign her name to the letter. <laughs> yeah. If you want to complain, sign it. What's wrong, lady? You have no guts? I dare you. I double dog dare you. I triple dog dare you. Sign your name. <laughs> the puppet's got more guts than than this lady. That's right. No, seriously, that that irritates me. I hate anonymous letters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always believed that if you are going to, you know, comment, you know, sign your name to it. You know. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just what makes the most sense as far as I'm concerned, what we should do. And, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, a, uh, uh, it, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of struck me as kind of ditzy, actually. Yeah. You know, she loves you, Lexi for Prez, you know. Uh, I wonder if her last name is Luther. 
Like, see Luther. Uh, anyway, uh, you know. You know, this is something that if, if she kind of thought this through, you know, we'd look at this and go, oh, she's trying to get the Christian vote, you know. <laughs> 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 but at that age, she's probably not thinking it through that much, you know. She's just, mm-hmm. you know, this is a girl that wants to express her faith. And uh, so she said, oh, I'm putting a poster up at school. So to, you know, for my campaign, why don't I write Jesus loves you on it too? You know, that'd be cool. <laughs> so it's funny she got national news for it. <laughs> Not sure how that happened. Yeah. So I wonder if the, uh, the this was originally on a WJXT TV in Jacksonville. I wonder if now that they, you know, you know, because of, you know, they wanting to bring back the fairness doctrine, but now they have to give equal time to, you know, her opponents and, you know, in the fifth grade there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I was on TV, you know. <laughs> Thanks for the campaign coverage. So, and for you Joe Biden fans out there. You know, please forgive me for that remark. But anybody who says that FDR went on TV in 1929, you know, when he was president, you know, doesn't deserve too much consideration, in my opinion. I heard a great quote this week. And now we know, of course, he's been forced down in a a helicopter and, you know, shot at in in, in Iraq. By snowflakes. Um, I I was wondering if he was on the same flight that Hillary Clinton was. I saw a great quote this week. It's a, it was, um, America is the greatest nation in the world. Let's work to change that. <laughs> Everybody should be able to figure out who said yeah, that. I... I think it wasn't Sarah Palin. <laughs> no. no. Okay. But let's, uh, let's move away from politics a bit. And uh, and but still looking at, at government involvement in churches, let's move up to New York, Albany, in specific. Life moves pretty fast. Ooh, tarot cards, huh? Yeah. Ooh, scary. <laughs> Halloween thing. Boom. <laughs> Are you gonna be good tonight? <laughs> anyway, so um, in Albany, New York, there is a psychic fair in Albany, and um, I'm not even sure actually who's even who the, uh, you know, it's um, psychic fair and Halloween festival, and um, it's going to be on in, uh, uh, the concourse of Empire State University. Isn't that where uh, Peter Parker goes to school in the yeah. Spider-Man comics that you yep. go to Empire State? Yeah, I thought so. Um, I recall, I, I thought so. But um, and yeah, so some of the Christians there are are, are objecting to it. Um, you know, so there's a satanic satanic element to psychic fairs and the occult and New Age religion. And uh, you know, it's crossing the state and church and state boundary because you know it's. Um, you know, that's being sponsored by that. Um, the people are going that the office of general services are just going. It's good, clean fun. You know, nobody really believes this stuff, do they? Um, you know, their vendors are coming who are st- and it's strictly entertainment. It's not costing anything to the taxpayers. It's not connected to the, to the occult or religion. Um, and, uh, you know, on the other hand, you know, this one guy, uh, Thomas Kearns, an Albany-based psychic, says he's a minister of spiritualism. You know, but for him, the work is not mere, merely entertainment. Uh, but, you know, because of, you know, in order to get on something like that, it's easier to say that we're entertainers. Yeah, you avoid getting sued. I mean... I don't know what to think of this. All right, well... What do you think, Dale? Okay. Now, just uh, last week in my confirmation class, 
we were talking about the second commandment. You shall not take, or you shall not misuse God's name. Okay. Um, and uh, part of Luther's definition uh, of what does this mean uh, says that we should not use satanic arts. All right. So the kids, what's satanic arts? All right. And so we talked about a whole bunch of different things. Uh, we talked about um, mediums. We talked about which is which would fall under this category. Uh, we talked about Ouija boards, and um, you know, I forgot tarot cards. I forgot that one. Um, but uh, we talked about Wicca um, and and other sort of witchcraft, um, and we talked about uh, horoscopes, uh, astrology. And, uh, you know, basically we, it, what it comes down to is all of this kind of stuff is the the basis of it or, or kind of the idea behind why people like to use it is because they say, all right, um, they may not come right out and say this, but this is kind of the way it works. Well, I don't know what my future holds. And so I want to find out what it holds so that I can take control of my destiny or so that I can be prepared for it or whatever. All right. So that's a real lack of faith because what are you saying? You're saying, you know, I don't, you know, what? I know what my future holds. Someday I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus. Someday he's going to come back and I'm going to be resurrected and I'm going to live forever. Okay. And so I don't need to worry about my future. All right. You know, the rest in between, that's just details. And God's going to be with me through all of that, too. And so I don't need to worry about that either. One way or another, you know, I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of this stuff is dra drawing people's attention away from that. Now, I had friends in high school uh, that were involved in, in some of this stuff. They weren't psychics, um, but, well... Some people might call them that. Um, they were involved. Uh, one in particular comes to mind who was a medium. Uh, she talked to spirits. And, like, not for show, she'd do it by herself in her apartment. Um, well, this college, too. Um, I met her in high school. Um, and so she'd sit in her college apartment uh, talking to spirits. And she would... Um, you know, and, and, and they would tell her that, well, yeah, when you die, you don't, there's no heaven or hell. You just kind of, you know, hang around in this other, you know, uh, state of existence or whatever. And um, she was a Christian when she started out. Eventually, she started believing these spirits, and uh, she became New Age religion instead, which is kind of the basis for a lot of this uh, psychic stuff, um, which, I mean, New Age religion is, is kind of rehashed uh, Hinduism for the most part. But, um, you know, it's, and she got, she got real, uh, involved in this. She started believing these things and, you know, um, well, there goes her faith. All right. So my take on this is, you know what? There's such a thing as angels that these, some of these guys claim to talk to angels. You know what? Some of them might talk to angels. All right. But there's two kinds of angels. All right. There are God's angels, the holy angels that protect us and um, and look out for us and serve God. And then there's the devil and his angels. And uh, they'd be more than happy to talk to you and uh, and tell you that that you don't need to believe in Jesus, that there's no heaven, uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, C.S. Lewis said uh, in the preface to the Screw Tape Letters that the devil is happy to take either an atheist or a sorcerer. He doesn't care which, he'll take you either way. And the um I mean I, I will, there's a woman at my wife's office who, you know, is into the tarot cards. My favorite, by the way, I ever was the pet psychic. Have I ever told you about the pet psychic? No. It's time to take a drink now. <laughs> Have I ever, ever talked oh yeah, she she was on the radio one time. It was great. And she would tell you what your dog or cat was thinking. And so these people would call in and say, well, I want to know, my, my dog's not with me now. Well, where is she? Oh, she's all down on Walpole. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, what's your dog's name? You know, I don't know. Ronaldo. Oh, okay. What kind of dog? She's a collie. Oh, collie. Oh, I've got Ronaldo. Okay. 
Um, Ronaldo likes the color pink. You want to <laughs> buy her some pink things. Her dog's colorblind. Oh, well, when we take her to get her hair, when we take her to get her hair cut, she gets the pink ribbon. Well, she likes that pink ribbon. She likes things pink. So buy her some more pink things. Don's are going exactly, Neil. But Don's colorblind, lady. But what a great gig. It's not like you can talk to the dog and find out if it's what you really think or not. You know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so people buy in, buy into the stuff. Um, you know, and uh, it, it's. Um, <coughs> I mean, I think the guy's going, this is good, clean, fair, but none of this is real. It's all make-believe. Yeah, we might as well have a Harry Potter festival. I think this is what this OGS guy's viewpoint is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's none of this is real. It's all make-believe. They're, they're all fakes. We know it. Um, you know. Um, yeah, when's the last time a psychic won know, the me, lottery? Way, I, I deal with the horoscopes. Yeah, you know. Uh, or, uh, uh, um... Or, you know, what was the, you know, that the psychic went up to somebody and said, oh, uh, and, and, and what's your name? You mean you don't know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, a, 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 you know, uh, people think of him as Sybil Trelawney from, from the Harry Potter series, you know, just an old fraud. You know, it doesn't really, you know, none of it's real. Um and, and we're not exposed to expected to take it, you know, realistically. Um, by the way, I deal with this stuff in my confirmation class under First Commandment uh, issues. But uh, one of the questions we get, you know, we, you know, I, I ask kids, how many of you read your horoscope? And they all raise their hand. I say, how many of you believe it? And they all laugh. None of them do. You know, it's just yeah. something goofy to read. None of it's real. You know, it's it's just. I do confess, I like fortune uh-huh. cookies. They're not really Chinese. I, I found that out. The Chinese people are like, what's this? This is weird. No. Why would you put paper in a cookie? But um, I, I like reading them um, because, like, like one time we we drove to um, to my favorite Chinese restaurant. It's about 45 miles away. And, um, and, and we always go there for my birthday. And we got this one. It said something like, you're going to take a long trip soon. I'm like, yeah, we're going to drive home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> And so you know, every once in a while, there is American as uh, chow mein. Yeah. I mean, there's Chinese as chow mein. Yeah. Anyway, back to this this thing. Um, at the same time, some people do take it seriously. Mm-hmm. For some people, it is. I mean, the one guy says, you know, hey, guess what? If it, um, um, you know, I'm a minister of spiritualism. You know, so he he obviously says he said is, is more. <laughs> He sees it as more than a, uh, you know, a, a form of entertainment. Should this be taking place on a college campus? No taxpayer money is involved. You don't, you're not being required to take part in it. It's, it's just sitting out there. My question, my only question would be, would they, would they allow a Christian fair? You know, would they allow, you know, a group of churches to, to hand out literature and stuff? Right, right. You know, if they will, you know. And that, and that's frankly this group that's that's protesting it. That's what they should do. They should say, "All right, fine, equal time." You know, you you need to allow us uh, to do a Christian fair, and you need to allow the uh, Pastafarians to have their flying spaghetti monster fair too. Right. You know, and, and the rest of them. Or we can have Marcus Karnak the Great. <laughs> Great psychic, like he used to be on Johnny Carson. Karnak rocked. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Dial. Mm. Benedict the Sixteenth. Mm. <laughs> Jim Butler. Mm. <laughs> Name a soap, a pope, and a dope. <laughs> That wasn't very funny. I thought. <laughs> I have too entirely much fun in my life. I really do. So, if you had fun on our uh, watching our show tonight, 
or if you have uh, anything you'd like to say to any of the three of us. Um. <laughs> Mark likes fan mail. Send me fan mail. <laughs> speaking of fan mail, by the way, and speaking of uh, political things, we did get a uh, email. Uh, a comment from our YouTube yep. uh, from a person uh, didn't sign his name. Uh, it was, has the it was email, living God's has, way is their uh, uh, profile. Yeah, name. their handle profile name. Yeah. And uh, he says, um, this is uh, commenting on episode 90. Yeah. Um, said in 2002, Obama was the only one who voted against providing aid to abortion survivors now he calls anyone who quotes him a liar. How do you properly describe a lawmaker who would condemn the child survivor of an abortion by permitting doctors to refuse that child, once born alive, potentially life-saving medical treatment and nutrition? A number of things come to mind. Uh, Mr. President isn't one of them. McCain, Palin, country first. Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, I, I read that comment, and I had two comments there. Uh, uh, living. Uh, Number one, I would never vote for him. And, uh, you know, not that my vote makes any difference. I'm thinking of, you know, actually voting constitutional party because I'm in Massachusetts and it's already in the tank here. I mean, (laughs) the nice part, we're not getting any, you know, unless it's a national cable ad or something or it's an ad from New Hampshire, we're not getting any ads here. You know, nobody cares. Uh, where, you know, the, the, this, this aid is already, you know, you know, the, the election, you know, could have happened six months ago and he would have won. I mean, there's just no question about Massachusetts for us. We have a so DVR. We don't know what's going on here. We 30 but, seconds skip through the ads. <laughs> yeah. But we don't even have them. So, but I would never vote for him. But if he is elected by scripture, we must call him the president. Yep. You know, I was just reading today in First Peter, and Peter talks about show honor to all who, you know, all in authority, kings and emperors. You know, Paul under Romans 13 tells the same thing. And think about this. They're talking about showing, um, you know, respect to a government that was, would persecute them, to respect a government that allowed for uh, infanticide and exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Just as great of evils as we see in our government. And Paul wrote but, that from you know, jail. He didn't say, well, uh, right. Uh, no, he, he didn't write that. Well, no, he, he wrote, wrote two from jail. Philippians, uh, and he talks about it in there, too. Yeah. Uh, also, I think he may hint, hint at it in Ephesians. I can't remember. But, uh, but the, the key thing is, is, you know, under what you know Luther would call the table of duties, um, you know, yes, we are to, 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 to show respect to our president. Even if we disagree with him, and believe me, if uh, you know Barack Obama is o- o- elected, I definitely um, I will be praying for this country every day. I will be triple praying for this country for the next four years. Uh, but or at the same years, time, we'll need to be praying for him it. too. So praying for him that you know oh, praying okay. for guidance and you know the spirit of leadership and, and things like that. Lots of guidance. So, Lots of wisdom. Um, no, that's well, we a good point. We didn't get that remark, and uh, we um, we mentioned uh, when a, a church calls a pastor. All right, they're calling a sinner. All right. Well, you know what? We elect a president. He's a sinner too, or you know, or she, or whatever. You know, um, and so no matter who you have, they're not going to be perfect. So, but we got. Another email, too. But Lexi might be perfect. I think Lexi might be a perfect uh, <laughs> perfect president. Go, Lexi! <laughs> you want to read this Go other ahead. email? I'll let you do it. Okay. Uh, this, this, this was too cool. I was telling people all about this. It was getting really weird. All right. It says, hi, Jim and Dale. I'm Paul Castiglia. I think I pronounced that right co-creator and editor of Mecha Manga Bible Heroes comic books, which we covered in last week's episode. This is, I just watched your podcast where you covered our comic. I'd love to send each of you a copy. So Jim and I are each getting free copies of 
Mechamonga Bible Heroes. We're pretty excited. <laughs> so thanks, Paul. I can't wait. I think this is so cool. I just think it's the neatest thing in the world. Um, and um, so I'm just, I can't. And we, we did promise Steve and uh, uh, that when we get it, Paul. we'll review it on the show. Paul. I don't know. Steve. <laughs> yeah, Paul. We will, Paul. We will. Whatever. Uh, we will. <laughs> Be quiet, you. Be nice. Um we will uh, review it on the show and, uh, you know, give give our whole take. But, I mean, just just, just the art that I saw in Musarama looks really cool. So yeah, I, I'm excited. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really psyched. So, yeah, you can watch for that uh, uh, soon. And uh, we'll, we'll have a, a full review of the Mecha Mongo Bible Heroes comic. So look forward to that. So we'd love to hear from you. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, are you voting for Lexi, um, <laughs> or or, uh, or anything else? Uh, and, and you can email us. Fan mail to Mark. Tell him you want more Mark. Mark, can you tell us that uh, email address? Podcast at crossfeednews dot com. <laughs> right. Tell him Mark sent you. Or uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. Twitter name is Crossfeed News. Um, and uh, just a reminder that if you, Do you come really with... want people to know that you're a twit. <laughs> no, that's something else entirely. That's a different podcast. So um, if you see any interesting uh, religious news stories, please uh, sign up for an account, a free account at uh, crossfeednews.com and uh, and submit your news stories there. Uh, you can also leave comments on any of the stories that are there. Um, and so we would love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Good. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. God bless. Everybody.